So what we're looking at here is a CRS125. And if we look at the bridge menu and look at the bridge here and then click on ports, what we'll see is that all of our Ethernet interfaces are in this bridge, the bridge called bridge. And it says H for hardware. So what this means is that Here's looking at the block diagram of the CRS125. If I have a device on port Ether1 and a device on port Ether17 on the same VLAN, then when I communicate between those devices, it's going to happen at wire speed in the switch chip. It's going to go into the switch chip and back out that port like this. It's not going to go anywhere near the CPU. Okay, now watch what happens if I go to the bridge and I edit the bridge and I turn on bridge VLAN filtering. Okay, apply. Bang. I lost, I lost connectivity there for a second. It wasn't very obvious, but I did. And now all of these ports no longer have a hard rate acceleration. None of them. So what's gonna happen now if I'm communicating between port Ether1 and port Ether17. It's going to go from port Ether1 into the switch chip, up this one gigabit trunk into the CPU, get bridged to port 17, back down that one gigabit link, and out to port Ether17. Now for one connection, you might not notice the difference, but if there's multiple connections at the same time, they are all going to be impacted. Let's say I have ports Ether1 communicating to Ether17 and port Ether8 communicating to Ether24, like a PC to a server, right? Or two people playing a LAN game or copying files. Then every single one of those connections has to go up from the port into the chip up to the CPU and back down to whatever the destination is. If the total connection speed of all those connections is more than a gigabit, they're going to all cap out aggregate at no more than one gigabit a second because they're all going through this link here. They come in, they go up to the CPU, they get bridged, they go down back to the switch. And obviously that will not scale very well at all. Not only that, you then become limited by the absolute maximum bridging capability of the CPU. So what is that capability? Well, I'm glad you asked, and here's one I prepared earlier. If you look at the switching results in hardware, it can switch at 24 gigabits a second. It's in the switch chip at wire speed. But if you're bridging the absolute maximum bridging performance is 983 megabits a second. And the smaller those packets become, the slower it goes due to the overhead. Small packets, effectively, a bigger chunk of the packet is like Ethernet frame handling as opposed to data. So it's very slow and you wouldn't do this. <laughs> in software on a CRS125. So what if though, we decided to do our bridging in a MicroTik RB4011? It's a good question. It states that if you use bridge VLAN filtering on this particular device, it won't do it in hardware. Okay. Uh, this particular device also does not support doing VLANs in the switch chip. So if you're doing VLANs on an RB4011, your only alternative, sorry, your only option is to use bridge VLAN filtering. That could be a problem too, right? Hang on a second. RB4011 bridging almost 10 gigabits a second. What? So let's quickly jump back to the block diagram for the RB4011. So I've got my RB4011 up and running. And let's look at the ports in my bridge. They are all no H, no hardware. Okay, 
So let's use the example in port Ether6 to Ether9, since that's what's in my active bridge right now. Let's do that. So I've got a device on Ether6, and it's communicating to a device on the same VLAN to a device on, say, Ether9. The Ethernet frame comes in, it goes to the switch, it goes up the 2.5 gig link to the CPU, back down that link, once it's been bridged, out to Ether9. Okay, so it's in software. Let's do the same thing from ETH1 to ETH5. Same thing, comes in, goes to CPU, goes back out again, ETH5. You might say to yourself, well, hang on. It'd be impossible for this thing to bridge at 10 gig a second because these are 2.5. That's true. <laughs> they obviously tested using the 10 gig interface. <laughs> so obviously for the testing, they plugged uh, the 10 gig port into another test equipment and they went up this interface, did some bridging, came back down. So they're basically leveraging the fact that this device has a 10 gigabit port. But even though we're bridging in software, look at the performance. It's basically wire speed, basically. What it doesn't say is how much CPU is being consumed, right? So it might be a lot, it might be all of it, to bridge at 10 gigabit a second in software, leaving no CPU available for routing and firewalling and queuing or anything else. So you wouldn't use an RB4011 as a core switch to do, you know, communication between devices on multiple VLANs. But jumping back into my RB4011 here, if I connect my ether 10 sorry my 10 gigabit interface into a core switch which can do switching at wire speed between ports on the same vlan then i just use bridge vlan filtering on the rb4011 just for the purpose of trunking multiple vlans over an interface because Let's say I have a device on VLAN 1 and I want to communicate to a device on VLAN 10. Whether I was using software bridging or not, that packet would come from a port on the core switch up to this SFP interface on VLAN 10, all the way up to the CPU, hit the CPU and get routed to the other VLAN, right? The packet would get tagged as it left and go back down. That would be the same whether this device had hardware level VLANing or not, right? So if I'm only using this single 10 gig interface to do my VLAN handling, there is literally no measurable performance impact between this and a device which does bridge VLAN filtering in hardware because this is my router and I am just trunking packets from different VLANs up to the router. I'm using a core switch specifically a CSS326 in my case, or a CRS326 would be just the same, to do all the hardware level switching down at the network interface level. Having said all that, let's say your small office or home network is mostly wireless uh, devices and you only have four or five wired devices, but they need to be on different VLANs, right? For whatever reason, then it's probably fine on an RB4011 to turn on bridge VLAN filtering and deal with the fact that the maximum inter VLAN speed you're going to get on one of these interfaces is two and a half gigasecond. You probably won't notice it, right? The times that the limitations of using bridge VLAN filtering and having to tunnel everything up through this two and a half gig interface the, the times that that would be an impediment to you would be so low as to be immeasurable and you might as well just do it. For a very small network, you could use an RB4011 as your combination of router and switch with VLAN support and everything would be rosy. But Microtik have to point out that bridge VLAN filtering is slower because of situations like this one when there's 24 ports and you might have lots of VLANs defined for whatever reason. And if you need to uh, turn on VLANing and you use bridge VLAN filtering, specifically bridge VLAN filtering on this device, 
then your switching is gonna become an absolute nightmare. Everything goes to one gigabit a second link here and everything's being processed by a 600 megahertz CPU, it's gonna melt. Not literally, figuratively melt. So yes, on devices like this, if you want to use VLANs and have ports communicate to each other, right, you don't use bridge VLAN filtering, you would absolutely use the recommended VLAN configuration mode for the CRS 1XX slash 2XX series of switches, where you define all the VLAN handling not in bridging, you define all these settings in your switch chip, right? So what you'll note on a CRS125 with these quote advanced end quote switch chips, that when you do VLAN tagging, you'll note that the CPU port is a possible port you can mention. That's this one, right? So on the switch chip, there's 25, sorry, 26 ports. There's 24 ethernet ports, RJ45 ethernet ports. There's one SFP ethernet port, gigabit. And there's one additional gigabit port off the switch chip going to the CPU. And so when you are wanting packets to be routed between VLANs, you need to tell the switch chip to send those packets tagged up to the CPU. It's just a different way of handling VLANs and routing between VLANs on different hardware. That's the way you have to do it on a CRS125 or CRS2XX series switch to ensure that if you're just communicating between ports on the same VLAN, that you're doing it in the switch chip at wire speed. You've got to do it that way. It's just life. If you have a CRS 3XX series switch, sorry, router switch, cloud router switch of any model, CRS 305, CRS 307, CRS 312, then you can do bridge VLAN filtering on any of these and they will still switch communication between ports on a VLAN in hardware. Now you may not believe me, so here's the proof. Here is a block diagram for a CRS 326. You can Google the stuff in MicroTik about bridge VLAN filtering and they will say CRS 3XX series, all do it in hardware. Okay, all of them? Yeah, okay, 326. What chip is in it? 98DX3236. What about a CRS309? Oh, 98DX. Oh, what about a CRS305? 98DX. All the CRS3 series switch chips, uh, sorry, all the CRS3 series switches are all based on a similar variation of the same combined system on a chip. That combined system on a chip operates in hardware in a manner which allows MicroTik to use the bridge nomenclature and using the bridge nomenclature and bridge VLAN settings, have those settings be written down into the hardware of that chip. The other devices in the MicroTik product line up don't have the ability to take that bridge nomenclature and put that down into the hardware. It's not a one-to-one -one mapping. So on a CRS125, you've got to do it a different way using these VLAN tagging settings in the switch settings than if you're using a CRS305. Which one do I prefer? I don't know why you care what I think, but my preference is the CRS305 or three series version of VLANing. It is simpler and requires less command line settings to set up VLANs in bridges on MicroTik than it is using this method here. If you take this method and write this method out, it's a lot different between the two and I'll show you. So here we are in my crappy Excel file. This are these, I should say, are the configuration settings 
for applying VLANs on the various different types of device that MicroTik support. And this is actually using the example they provide in their wiki. Specifically, the MicroTik basic VLAN switching page. Everything in my Excel is the configurations taken from here and put in Excel format. So jumping back to the Excel, what does it look like? So for these three VLANs which are configured and these particular ports looking exactly like this, right? We require 19 lines of configuration on a CRS 1XX or 2XX series. On a VLAN capable router, and that is some of the router models have switch chips in them, which can do VLAN tagging in the switch chip, right? Then it's also 19 lines of configuration. But in any device that uses bridge VLAN filtering, it's only 16 lines of config. And if you ask me, and you probably don't care, but if you do ask me, then my view is this particular configuration is easier to understand as what's happening with each line than it is with this configuration. Interface Ethernet switch, ingress VLAN translation, add ports Ether2, customer vid 0, new customer vid 20, SA learning yes. Bridging, add to the bridge, these ports tagged, these ports untagged, what VLAN are they? I think I know which one of those is easier. You might be quite well used to this and you might say to me, well, anyone who doesn't understand MicroTik's just an idiot. There are always going to be new customers, always. It doesn't matter if you have 25 years experience in MicroTik. What matters is the people who are trying to do something for the first time. This is better, it's easier. Yes, if you do this on any device other than the CRS3 series, it is gonna be in software. Will that matter? Maybe not. Maybe your device is fast enough. Maybe what you're asking the device to do won't go anywhere near the limits of the CPU. Maybe it'll leave plenty of CPU power left to do firewalling and routing. In my specific case, on my RB4011, I have bridging on that, e on that 10 gig interface across different VLANs. I have 25 firewall rules. I have very complex queuing, which does interface queuing with fast track. Yes, it can be done. You have to use interface queues as the parent. And this machine, sorry, this router rarely cracks. Rarely cracks. <laughs> like 5% CPU. And I have a gigabit internet link. So depending on what you're doing, you can absolutely go and use bridge VLAN filtering because it's just easier and you just don't have to worry about all this stuff.